Hi guys, so I'm here to do a music review for you all. So, I want to start by saying that a lot of my reviews are going to be of older music. I don't mean like older, older, but at least 10 years old, maybe older, eventually, soon, a long time from now, who knows. But, if you are going to watch my channel and expect the newest of new all the time, it's not going to happen. Because I listen to what I want, when I want, regardless of how popular it is, or how not popular it is. So, you could, I don't know, see a review for Evanescence one day, and um, a song I like from Demi Lovato the next, or something. The point is I want to put more music on my channel, more music related videos, and definitely it, more reviews because, I don't know, it's just, um, I think we're lacking reviews. So what I'm going to be reviewing right now is Under the Pink by Tori Amos. Now I was... <sighs> So I discovered Tori around the time I was 17, like I had heard her before, but I never li listened to her before then. And I'm 29 now, so it's been a little over 10 years since I became a Tori fan. I do prefer her older stuff, her, you know, 90s, early 2000s music versus what she has now. Not saying that what she has out now is bad, it's just really not into my taste. Like, I'll listen to it, but it's not my favorite from her. So, this is her sophomore album. <sighs> this is definitely better than Little Earthquakes. Now, Little Earthquakes, it was good. I wasn't old enough to listen to it, and like I said, I was 17 when I really started listening to her. And, you know, I was a little kid when this stuff came out, so I was listening to, you know, Backstreet Boys and Spice Girls and stuff. But uh, if I was an older kid in the 90s, seeing how I am now, I, I probably definitely still would have been a Tory fan. Under the Pink was good? No. Yeah, this is Under the Pink. Um, Little Earthquakes was good. However, I felt some of the songs were a little samey in kind of the sound. Like, there wasn't a whole variety of sound and everything. It was still good, but it was definitely a, a debut, you know, you could tell. And because this one gets better. Pretty Good Year is not my favorite song. It's a decent opener and everything, but it is kind of slow and then it just kind of builds up in that one second and it comes back down. I really wish she would have had a little bit more of that in the song because it just gives that that little power rush, I guess, whatever you call it. But it, it's a decent song. It's a She sounds pretty in it. Then uh, you have God, which is more of a fun poking fun at religion kind of song. It's not like anti-Christian, it's not anti-religion or whatever, but um, yeah, it seems a little bit more humorous. It's not my favorite song on here, music-wise. I find the lyrics kind of clever, funny, but just musically it's not my favorite. Now, Bells for Her. That song is, it's so, it takes a while to get through, but the lyrics are kind of intense if you, like, really listen to them. And the music is just soft and pretty and beautiful, but it, it's one of those songs that you know has a darker side to it. I know she talked about her friends and abuse and um, stuff that she's personally gone through, you know, sexual assault and other stuff and, you know, so a lot of her music is kind of mature and some of it's a little bit more metaphorical, some of it's put right out there. Uh, Bells for Her is 
not straight out there, but not totally metaphor either. Um, you can definitely tell she is talking about a friend who is under somebody, um, being controlled in some way and, you know, kind of losing herself. It's one of those songs that's, I love it, but, um, yeah, it's a little heavy. Past the Mission, this one again, has a little bit of a darker tone to it. The music video was kind of interesting. I think she was in Spain when she did that one. This one is a little bit more upbeat. And um, then you have Baker Baker, which is another pretty one, but very sad. It has a nice melody to it. Um, her voice sounds really pretty, really beautiful. I think, you know, it, it would have been nice to have a video to this one because I've never seen one. I don't think she has a video to that one. But um, she, from what I read, she did explain that part of the song is about how people always say men are emotionally unavailable, but they never think about women being that way too. And I can't remember if she directly said this herself or not, or if somebody like interpreted the song that way, but like I said, she did suffer um, from assault. Um, before she was like really famous and everything, she was um, sexually assaulted by um, somebody that she had picked up to give a ride home to or something like that. And um, so from what I gather from information from people and everything and the song itself, you know, when stuff like that happens, you kind of become emotionally unavailable like you know you don't trust people obviously and you know relationships obviously are hard to work on because of the trust and everything and it's kind of about her realizing that she is that way right now and the song you know she repeats um, Baker Baker um, Give me a day Make me whole again Or something like that I can't remember the lyrics offhand And Tori's father is a preacher A minister Whatever you want to call him So she kind of grew up with religion And one can interpret this song As her You know Asking God Slash the Baker To you know, make her whole again, to make her a day, you know, make everything new again, heal her, complete her, you know, and that is one of my favorite of her metaphors and everything. I'm not even sure if it's the correct metaphor or whatever, but the way it comes across, she is asking this imaginary figure, this baker, to um, basically make her whole again. Then you have The Wrong Band, yeah, it's not my favorite song, but it's it's fun. The Waitress, this one is slightly rockish and everything, or at least Tori's attempt at rock. I like it, it's pretty much a bitchy song and everything, it's about her fantasizing about, it's about, basically about her, she's a waitress. And there's this other waitress that everyone loves, you know, all the guys pay attention to and everything, and she kind of, like, fantasizes, I guess, about killing her. But, um, she keeps her cool because she believes in peace. Then there is Cornflake Girl. Um, this is an awesome song. I prefer the British video to the American one. I don't know. I, I like both videos, but I, I just prefer that one. That one is a little bit darker, and I think kind of goes with the theme of the song. Now, I've heard different, 
stories behind the song and what it's actually supposed to be about. But when it all comes down to it, the song basically revolves around women betraying women. That, you know, sometimes we are our biggest enemies and backstabbers and everything. And part of the song is based off a book she had read that dealt with um, female circumcision or general mutilation. In where in some countries, and this is different parts of the world, I, I think a lot of it happens in Africa, but it's not exclusive to that. So it, it happens many different places. And these basic uh, barbaric acts are performed on these young girls by their own mothers and everything. And so, yeah, it, it's just kind of about the few women who stand for other women and other people, they're kind of like raisins in a bowl of cornflakes. At least that's what the metaphor is supposed to be, and I'm probably explaining it very wrong. But basically, no matter who you are, and probably this can go to either gender and all kinds of people, that good, decent people who are not out to hurt people, sometimes they feel like there's very, sometimes it feels like there's very, very few of them. And I think that's what the song is trying to portray. Icicle. Another laid-back one with a um, adult message. Listen to it and you'll you'll find out. Um, she kind of references icicles and her family celebrating Christmas or whatever downstairs while she is um yeah just listen to it. Cloud on my tongue. But it's okay, this one's kind of hard to understand. Sometimes she, her lyrics really do get weird out there. Space Dog is another one that's kind of odd. I think it has to do with politics. Um, Space Dog is a fun song. And then you have Yes, Anastasia, which is okay. It's really not my favorite song. Um, it's not the most memorable song either. So my favorites on here, I would say, are definitely Bells for Her, Cornflake Girl, and The Waitress, and Baker Baker. My favorite on here might be Baker Baker and then Cornflake Girl. Um, I definitely recommend those songs. They are just sad, metaphorical, beautiful, and um, yeah, if you're looking to get into Tori, besides Boys for Pele, which I spent God knows how long talking about that one. I would definitely recommend this one. This one might be... It, it fights for the spot of number two on Tori uh, between that and um, Scarlet's Walk. So, this one has a little bit more variety than her first album. And it's really good. I love it. I love the sound. I love the mood it puts you in. And... I definitely recommend it. So, I will see you guys next time. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.